Income Tax 2022-2023, Maker's Depreciation. Which depreciation method applies? Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Most of this information comes from publication 946, How to Depreciate Property Tax Year 2022. You can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, noting we're in line one income. Remembering the first half of the income tax formula is in essence an income statement, but just an outline other forms and schedules flowing into these line items. One of those the Schedule C, having business income minus business expenses, the net business income rolling in from Schedule C to line one income of the income tax formula. First page of the form 1040, noting that the Schedule C flows into the Schedule 1, flowing into the first page of the form 1040, line number eight. The Schedule C is the profit or loss from business, has an income statement format, income minus expenses, Expenses is our point of focus now, more specifically on depreciation, remembering that if we buy equipment, we might have to put it on the books as an asset deviating from a cash-based system. In that case, even if we're using a cash-based system, because the tax code makes us do that, and then we would have to allocate the depreciation over the useful life, and the methods of allocation might be similar in concept, but will be different from the tax code to book depreciation concepts. We are now talking about the maker's depreciation method, the standard depreciation methods, and then we'd have to layer on top of that the concepts of like 179 and special depreciation concepts. Okay, so continuing on with the maker's depreciation, one of the major uh, formats of depreciation for the tax code. Which depreciation method applies? Makers provides three depreciation methods under GDS, the standard, the usual format, as one uh, and one depreciation method under ADS, the less usual standard. Okay, so we've got the 200 declining balance method over a GDS for uh, the, that's the GDS for the makers depreciation methods. That's the recovery period. Now, when we talk about 200%, if you compare that to normal depreciation theology or, or theory from a bookkeeping side of things, then you would start with the straight line usually. Straight line in essence means you're gonna take like the cost, you're gonna divide it by the useful life, and then you're gonna allocate that cost evenly over the useful life until the cost has been fully depre uh, distributed and it has been fully depreciated. But you might have some accelerated depreciation methods, one of the more common ones being a double declining balance, which you might call a 2%, 200% uh, declining balance type of method. And that's what we're basically talking about here. It still makes rational sense from an accounting standpoint, oftentimes, because you could argue that I'm using the equipment more, I'm getting more out of it in the first years than the latter years. Therefore, I shouldn't be depreciating evenly over the time frame, but rather getting more depreciation up front. When I say getting more depreciation, by the way, that's good for taxes usually. So I would like an accelerated depreciation for taxes. It's bad usually for other accounting purposes in, in the terms of making your financial statements look as good as possible, which is usually the perspective of someone reporting externally, say to stockholders or something like that. So for taxes, yes, we would like the, the accelerated method if we can take it as opposed to a straight line method usually, and that's usually what the makers uh, gives us. So then we've got the 150% declining balance method over GDS recovery period, similar process. Uh, it's more front loaded, taking more upfront 
than the straight line method, but less than the 200% decline in balance. The straight line method over GDS recovery uh, period. So now that you've got the standard baseline method, the conceptual method that should first come to line or to mind when you're thinking about, you know, depreciation methods, straight line, even amount per the year for however many years apply. And then you've got the straight line method over an ADS uh, recovery period. So normally if you had a choice between all four of these methods from a tax standpoint we would probably want the du the double declining or the 200 percent declining because that means we're going to get the most depreciation up front less depreciation towards the tail end of the life of the property and if we can get the benefit sooner that's usually better for taxes because of time value of money however there are exceptions for example if I think next year or in future years, I'm going to have higher income than in the current year, pushing me up into higher tax brackets in latter years, then maybe I would like to take the straight line method and that will deduct an even amount in each year, taking, taking more of the depreciation possibly in those latter years where I might have the higher income. I might get more benefit that way. So again, the general rule, we deduct as much as possible as we can as soon as possible unless we have some rationale as to why wouldn't we do that. And then we're gonna have to be in compliance, of course, with the tax code as we have that thought process in our mind. So caution, your property placed in service before 1999, you could have elected the 150 declining balance method using the ADS recovery periods for certain property classes. If you made this election, continue to use the same method and recovery periods for that property. So usually the concept of consistency will apply here because uh, you know you can't really alter or change the methods once they've been put into place as a general rule, right? You'd want consistency to, to allocate the depreciation over the life. All right, depreciation methods for, for farm property. Remember that farming also always has their specialized kind of stuff or almost always quite often does. If you deal with farming, you might be having a specialized kind of area. That's a, a specialty field you can look into. So if you place personal property in service in a farming business after 1988 and before 2018, you must generally depreciate it under GDS using the 150% declining balance method unless you are a farmer who must depreciate the property under ADS using the straight line method or you elect to depreciate the property under ADS or, I'm sorry, GDS or ADS using the straight line method. So now you, you don't get the, the double declining or stuck at the 150 declining unless you elect to take a straight line kind of, of, of method. And so note that the straight line method is kind of usually just that. It's an election oftentimes. You, you, and, it, and if you have the ability to take the double declining or an accelerated method, 150% in this case, usually you would do that unless you have some rationale for defaulting back to like a straight line method. So you can depreciate real property using the straight line method under either GDS or ADS. Note, for three, five, seven, or 10 year property used in a farming business and placed in service after 2017 and tax years ending after 2017, the 150% declining balance method is no longer required. However, the 150 declining balance method will continue to apply to any 15 or 20 year property used in a farming business to which the straight line method does not apply or to property for which you elect the use of the 150 declining balance method. All right, so then we've got the, another somewhat unusual situation. I don't have, I've never seen this situation myself, more of a specialty area with the fruit or nut trees and vines. I would like to have some fruit and nut tree vines, but I don't. Depreciate trees and vines bearing fruits or nuts under GDS using straight line method over a recovery period of 10 years. Then you've got the ADS required for some farmers. If you elect not to apply the uniform capitalization rules to any plant produced in your farming business, you must use ADS. You must use ADS for all property you place in service in any year the election is in effect. See the regulations under Section 263A of the Internal Revenue Code for information on the uniform capitalization rules that apply to farm property. So electing a different method. What if I don't like the method that you want me to do? I want to elect a different. 
So as shown in table uh, 4-1, you can elect a different method for depreciation for certain types of property. You must make the election by the due date of the return, including extensions for the year you place the property in service. However, if you timely filed your return for the year without making the election, you can still make the election by filing an amended return within six months of the due date. So if you realize you made an error, you want to pick up that error soon and possibly be able to fix it with an amended return. And so you can go through that caution. If you elect to use a different method for one item in a property class, you must apply the same method to all property in that class placed in service during the year of the election. So they want some form of consistency. Uh, once again, you can see in this rule. So however, you can make the election on a property by property basis for non-residential real and residential rental property. And you would think that might be an exception because of the size of the nature of those property being quite large and expensive. So 150 election. So instead of using the 200% declining balance method over the GDS recovery period for property in the three, five, seven, or 10 year property classes, some of the more common property class, uh, you can elect to use the 150 declining method. So note that 200% would often be the, the biggest benefit up front. But you might say, well, maybe maybe I don't want the 200 because because I only want to deduct up to a certain point and I'd like to put the rest of the benefit into future periods, possibly because I'm going to drop on, below the next tax bracket or something. So you might think, well, then I'd have to default to the straight line method. But you still have this in-between point, which is 150, which might might be a good uh, a good method in some cases so you don't have to go from straight line all the way to 200 or 200 all the way down to straight line but you can have the middle they got the middle pier here at 150. so make the election by entering 150 double uh, db uh, under column f in part three of form 4562 then you got the straight line election instead of using either the 200% or 100, 150% declining balance method over the GDS recovery period, you can elect to use the straight line method over the GDS recovery period. So just to recap this, remember that you're saying, okay, now I've got a piece of property that I cannot expense upfront. I think I'm gonna have to put it on the books as an asset and then depreciate it. Then I have to see the categorization of the asset. So then I look for to see, does it fit under the categories of, five, of three, five, seven, ten, or so on? These are some of the mo more common categorization periods, three, five, and seven, for example. That's usually going to also, you know, tell us what the useful life, how long I'm going to depreciate it over. We do have the added complication of then, can I get a 179 or special depreciation and whether or not I want to take that depreciation up front and then we think about the method that's going to be used, which is usually driven by default from makers itself, which oftentimes for three, five, seven, ten year property, some of the more common property is a double declining type of balance, half year convention oftentimes, unless an exception applies. Then the question is, well, if I have the double declining balance, the kind of default, do I want to take that, which is usually the most beneficial one. That's why it's the default, because you get more expense up front, or do I want to taper that off going more towards a straight line method because I want more depreciation in later years than current year possibly because I think I'm going to have a higher tax bracket in later years due to my income being higher and do I want to taper it all the way back out to straight line make an election to do that which means I have to stick to straight line after I after I do that or take the middle position going from double declining in essence to 150 200 to 150 okay so make the election by, by entering straight line. If you want the straight line S slash L under column F in part three of form four, five, six, two. Okay. Election of ADS as explained earlier under which depreciation system GDS or ADS applies. You can elect to use ADS, even though your property may come under GDS. So usually your property, if it's under GDS, you would usually be picking that one and then be deciding under that whether or not you want the double declining, the straight line or the 150, that would be more common, but possibly you can elect to go to the ADS, which is usually less advantageous than 
Uh, the GDS, it might have, for example, a different a different life or because usually you can have a straight line possibly for the ADS, which you might say, why don't I just elect it the straight line up here with the GDS, but it might have a different other convention or different life period that you might want for some reason as well, which is more unusual of a, of a situation. So ADS uses the straight line method of depreciation over fixed ADS recovery periods. Most ADS recovery periods are listed in Appendix B or see the table under recovery period under ADS earlier. Make the election by completing line 20 in part three of form 4562. We've got the 20 or the 15 or 20 year farm property back to the farm property. Instead of using the 150 declining balance method over GDS recovery period for 15 or 20 year property you, you use in a farming business other than real property, you can elect to depreciate it using either of the following methods, the straight line method over GDS recovery, or the straight line method over an ADS recovery period.